Hey guys, MovieFan here to bring you another Cosplay Tuesday. I'm continuing on with my Megazord project from where I left off. If you haven't been keeping tabs, I already covered the Sabertooth Tiger, the Triceratops, and the Thighs. So now, we're going to move up to the Torso. The first step is probably the most crucial, and that's making a basic form. First, grab yourself two big pieces of cardboard, big enough to cover your front and back. Now there's more than one way to figure this out, and it all depends what you want your torso to do. Some people like to have the torso swivel right there in the center, or on the hip area. For me, I decided to have my torso to be a little stiffer, so I made it one big piece that goes from my neck all the way down to my crotch. I hate to use that word, but there's no other way to describe it. Anyway, first get two big pieces, big enough to cover your front and back, and make it roughly to the length of the top of your hips. Cut them both to the exact same size and get yourself two big squares of cardboard and duct tape them together. This is going to be the part that sits on your shoulders so your neck will get through. And obviously, you're going to have to cut a hole big enough for your head to fit. You're also going to need two long medium-sized pieces of cardboard. These pieces are going to be the bottoms to your sides. The purpose of these two pieces is structural strength. And as you may have noticed from this picture, they're pretty short. They don't really cover too much of the sides. It'll become clear as I go along, so bear with me. Once you get all your pieces set, duct tape them together. When you're done, you should have something that looks like this. This is what I like to call box troll mode. <laughs> anyway, tape them together and try it on. Make sure it fits right. If you can't get your head through, open it up some more. And also, you want to check to see if your arms can move properly. If they can't, shave down the edges to the front and the back. And be sure you got them exactly right, or else it's going to look funny. After you get it evened out where your arms can move and your head can go through the hole, cover the back with black duct tape. But you don't want to go too far. You want to go to right about here. Next, cover the neck piece with black duct tape. Be sure to get every inch of it, and underneath as well. After that, put a thin layer of duct tape on the top of the front piece. Then cover the bottom of the front piece to about here, and be sure to get the sides. Now, the reason why we're leaving these gaps here is so that we can add different pieces later on. We're going to need those gaps, that way it'll sit right, and at the same time, the black will act as a template for the front chest piece. It also helps it stick better. Next, grab yourself a thick piece of cardboard that bends into three pieces. This part's going to be the main piece of the pterodactyl, so of course we're going to need it to bend like this. I got lucky and managed to find one just the right size. Now, how you measure it is quite simple. All you gotta do is just take a look and hold it up against the front of the torso. If you can maneuver it just right to just like what you see in the series, that's what you want. All you gotta do is just cut it to size and then cover it with silver duct tape. After that, tape it to the front of the torso with clear packaging tape. The idea is to use that piece as kind of a measuring tool for the bottom half. Now, we're not going to keep it on with the packaging tape, because we're not done yet. But we do need it right where it sits, that way we can get the bottom part figured out. Next, find yourself two pieces of cardboard that are just short enough to fit right about there. You'll want to cut them to this exact shape. When you get them right the way you want them, hold them down with packaging tape. Then grab yourself a long rectangular piece. That'll be your center part. Once you get it to the right size you want it, hold it down with packaging tape once again. Then cut yourself two triangular pieces to fill in those two side gaps. Once you're satisfied with that, take all the pieces off and cover all the bottom pieces with red duct tape. For the rectangular piece, you'll want to finish it off with yellow and blue duct tape, just like this. Next, get two pieces of red duct tape and place them on the front. Grab yourself a ruler and a pencil and carefully mark out this shape on the duct tape. After that, carefully cut it out with a utility knife. Then cover the bottom of it with red duct tape. After that, grab a piece of cardboard and cut it to the shape that you want the top pterodactyl piece to bend. Cover it with red duct tape and duct tape it into place. When you're done, it should look something like this. After that, grab yourself a piece of cardboard and cut it to a proper triangle shape that you want to be on the silver part of the pterodactyl. Grab a black marker and start marking those triangles. When you're done, it should look like this. Then take the pterodactyl piece and duct tape it to the front with red duct tape. Then duct tape the middle bottom piece and the sides. Of course, you'll want to duct tape them with red duct tape. And it will look like this when you're done. So all you need to do is grab some black duct tape and cover all those splotches right there. When you're done, it should look like this. Now we're going to work on the hip part of the project. 
For this, you'll need some more pieces of cardboard. You'll have to get it to the right size of your hips. I would recommend getting some big rectangles for this part, but if you have just big squares, I'm sure you can make it work. You just have to cut it to the right shape. Pretty much what you want to do is just cut it into, well, a square. That's it. You're going to need it big enough to fit around the bottom part of the torso. We're doing it like this for two reasons. The first, so you can move properly. And the second reason is because while in the series, the hips extended a little more outward. When you tape it together, I suggest you go heavy on the duct tape, especially when you tape it to the torso for the obvious reasons. Tape it inside and tape it outside. For the outside, of course, you'll want to use black and red, depending where you got it attached. Once you got that completed, grab some gray duct tape and duct tape the very bottom. Be sure to make it a nice, even line. Now that we got that in place, we're going to make the tail fins of the pterodactyl. And it's really quite simple. Grab yourself a piece of cardboard and cut out this exact shape. Cover the whole thing with gray duct tape, then cover the center with red duct tape. Next, put a small strip of yellow duct tape on a piece of plastic and cut this shape out of it. Then put it into place. After that, cut two small blue pieces and cut them into the shape of triangles and put them into place. Now grab your tail piece, line it up, and duct tape it into place. Obviously, you'll want to use the red duct tape on the top part, and I would recommend using red on the bottom part as well. I would also recommend using gray duct tape on the fins to tape it to the torso. After that, you can cover that spot with black duct tape. After that, all you need to do is cover the center part right here with black duct tape and the two side pieces right here with red. And don't forget to cover the sides of the hips with red duct tape as well, roughly like this. Now, I'm sure you've noticed the little decoration I got on the side. We're going to cover that right now. Cut two pieces of cardboard to this exact shape. Cover them with gray duct tape and grab a black strip of duct tape and put it right there in the center. Curve the top edge where it looks, well, pretty much like the cardboard itself. Cut two small pieces of yellow duct tape and place it on a piece of plastic. Grab a pencil and draw a lightning bolt on either piece. Be sure that you got one lightning bolt facing one direction and the other facing the other direction. And cut them out with your utility knife then paste them on the black parts of those little pieces. After that, line up one of the pieces dead center on the hip and glue them into place. You can also use duct tape right on the bottom and do the same for the other piece. Now you might remember on the actual Megazord, it was this weird red and yellow thing, but I didn't like that. Instead, I went with the lightning bolts from my Megazord action figure. But if you want to try to duplicate what the Megazord had in the series, you can do that too. But I think this looks a lot better and it's a heck of a lot easier. Now we're going to move on to the smokestacks, and it's really quite simple. First, cut yourself some cardboard pieces and make a thick rectangular box. Repeat the process one more time, and then we'll move on to the pipes. All you got to do is grab two thick pieces of cardboard, place one on top of the other, and roll them up onto a dowel, and tape them shut. Repeat the process one more time. Now you can make the smokestacks any size you want. I decided to go for a more uh, medium-sized look. Once you got them taped and off the dowel, just cover them with silver duct tape. Make sure you cut big enough pieces of duct tape that you can tuck it inside the top of the smokestack while on the bottom you can clip them and fan them out so you attach it to your box piece. Which is what you do right now. You use those pieces and attach it to your box. And then cover the box with gray duct tape. Be sure to cover those fanned out pieces. That way it'll be nice and sturdy. Now we're not going to attach those just yet, because first we need to make the tail. First we're going to start at the top of the tail. What you need to do is get two pieces that are going to be the sides. Cut them into this shape right here, and cut some smaller pieces to fill in all the gaps. Duct tape them together, and cover it with red duct tape. Next grab yourself some long pieces of cardboard, and attach it to the top piece. Be sure to use red duct tape when you're putting that together. And now, we can attach the pieces. First, attach the tail dead center on the back. How you attach it is cut off some black pieces of duct tape and put them on the tail, just like this. Then cover over the black duct tape with red duct tape. And obviously the rest of the tail, too. Then cut four pieces of white duct tape off. Two long ones, two short ones. And place it where you want it on the tail. After that, you can attach the smokestacks. We're going to use the same method by using black duct tape to attach it to the back. And then we cover the black that's on the box with gray duct tape. After that, cut four medium-sized strips of black duct tape and place them on the box part of the smokestacks. Next, grab some extra duct tape and cover the inside of the torso, both front and back. This will keep your sweat from damaging the cardboard. And now, we fill in the sides. 
I had a heck of a time figuring this one out because obviously you want to be able to get your arms in and out with no trouble at all. And of course you don't want your sides exposed when you're wearing this. I found the simple solution would be to grab some black duct tape and just pile it on. Just put it on layer by layer all the way up to, well, roughly halfway below your armpit. And of course cover the black duct tape here and here. When you got the duct tape filled in just the way you want it, grab some more black duct tape or packaging tape and cover the sticky side. That way it won't stick to you. And there you have your torso piece. Be sure to stick around because later we're going to work on the arms. This is Movie Fan signing off.